They're making it easy for us today as both teams will practice simultaneously about 70 feet apart here at this Twinplex at the Montreal Canadiens practice facility along with Scott Morrison, Nick Kiprios and Doug McLean. Curious to see what Mike Therrien does with his team today because the tweaks that he put in place prior to game three really worked. Well he made several adjustments strategically going into that game and he also made some lineup adjustments and they all seemed to work as well. He took Vanek off the top line, moved him back with Pekanic, that created a goal, the opening goal of the game. He moved Gallagher up onto his number one line which has struggled since the first game of these playoffs and he just felt that distributed a little bit of energy amongst his forward core. We know the second and third lines have been really good for Canadians in these playoffs and now he created a little bit of balance. Bonneville gave them some great speed as well and really was a solid guy for them. Murray gave them some good minutes, helped with the strength factor, the size factor at the net. But Terrian, to me, dominated the coaching series in Tampa and again he's out coaching the Bruins. The neutral zone play last night kept the Bruins off balance the entire night. Well, for me, it's the trust that he has throughout his lineup. And yeah, you can count on your key guys like a P.K. Subban. But this time of year, it's your unlikely heroes, the guys that step up in that role-playing situation. No bigger goals in these playoffs have come from guys uh, other than uh, Weiss in terms of the Montreal Canadiens. Moen with key minutes late in the periods. Uh, for me, he's getting so much out of his lineup. You know, other than Carl Soderberg doing his best Nick Kiprios impression, running over... Carey Price, like you did on, on Grand Fear. Carey Price probably had his easiest game of the series in having to work to find the puck. Well, Nick talked about last night the block shots, and they did an excellent job of that, and that, again, kept people away from that. But they also did a great job, and we saw them practice the other day, where they were screening guys out from getting to the front of that. Just little picks, subtle picks at the side of the net, blocking out the Bruins from getting there. It was Price's easiest game, and one of those plays, actually, where they won a battle in front of the net, resulted in the Subban goal, where they won the battle in front of the net, and then hit Subban on the breakaway. So, a much better job of giving Price an opportunity to see the puck by block shots and screens and picks. Well, and it's interesting, to Doug's point, is the defense were saying afterwards that throughout the game, Price was hollering at him to get out of the way. If they weren't going to block it, then get out of the way, let him see it. A little bit of controversy late in the game with the P.K. Subban situation knocking the net off, and I can sit here and honestly say that we are split on whether or not he intentionally knocked the net off. If they would have awarded a penalty shot to the Boston Bruins with under two minutes, we'd still be arguing 50-50 whether or not he did or not. I'd like to see this thing much like shooting the puck over the glass. It used to be that that would be at the destruction, uh, destruction of the official on whether or not someone deliberately does that. Should be the same situation here, guys. If there's not within five or ten feet of another opponent near you, that net should not come off. To me, take it out of the official's hands and call it like a shot over the glass. Automatic. Automatic. You knock the net off without anybody beside you in terms what of an opponent. What if you pull an edge and slide into the net and stay uh, Hey, doesn't listen. Matter. What, what happens if you, uh, the, the puck stands up on edge and you shoot it over the glass? But once Sorry. That's a penalty, but not you're a penalty responsible. Shot. You are responsible uh, for keeping that net off if, if you're not getting uh, any other force from your opponent. Think? I'm not buying it. I, I mean, look, I, I could not fault the officials for not making that call with two minutes left in the game last night. If it's not going to result in a goal, to me, you don't make that call. A subtle push yeah. like that. I understand the rule, yeah. but a subtle push like that without it being a, a even close, remotely close to a goal yeah. being scored, I'm not you know, buying you, it. I you, think you, under that circumstance, you call a delay of game if you have a concern about him yeah, dislodging no, no, the net, not that. the penalty I'm shot. But, uh, but I'll tell you but what. Not a penalty shot. I tell you what. You felt the exact same way about shooting the puck over the glass. I don't like and, that. And you've either. gotten over it. That's a goofy and one. And you've too. gotten over that. You'll no, get I over it. I think it's goofy. And I think the spirit of the rule is taking away a scoring chance. Exactly.